everybody. My name is Graham Elwood, and you are watching The Political Vigilante, bringing justice to the people of Gotham. Well, every once in a while, we get a win, don't we? We get a little bit of a win. That's all right. There's just cops coming to get me. Um, Keystone XL Pipeline. Obama pretended to stop it, but he left it open. He, he didn't really stop it. He could have really stopped it, but he just said, oh, we're going to slow this down, knowing full well Trump would let it go. But because of public pressure and some other activist investors, I haven't heard of this before, but this is a new thing. Keystone XL oil project abandoned by the developer. Decision ends a years-long effort to pipe more Canadian crude to the U.S., Oh, what's that's going to really hurt Justin Trudeau? Yes, can, Canada's prime minister, big oil guy. Remember, I did a video a couple years ago. He got flown down to Texas to talk to a bunch of oil people. And he has this famous quote, something I'm going to paraphrase. It's something to the effect of, uh, it'd be criminal to not drill all the oil in Canada because there's all these untapped oil reserves in Canada. Justin Trudeau is another neoliberal piece of shit that doesn't care about anybody except his own his own good looks and his nonsense and his making money. So this has been a horrible idea, right? All these pipelines are horrible. And, and I've talked about this before. So to be clear on what these pipelines, the real purpose of these pipelines. So the fossil fuel industry, one of the reasons they need to keep building pipelines is to show that there's still a long-term investment upside in fossil fuels. Pipelines say, hey, we're going to keep going. We're going to keep going because there's a carbon bubble. I did a, this is one of the first stories I did four years ago. There's a carbon bubble and all this money is going to start coming out of fossil fuels once they realize there's no more future in it. Now, Trump was sort of their last gasp at the oil lobby, but let's let's be clear here. Biden is no environmental hero. He said we need a middle ground on climate policy. Well, middle ground climate policy, those are Joe Biden's words, mean, oh, we're going to get back, you know, we're back in the Paris Accord. We're going to cap and trade and carbon offsets and all this policy that is really fantastic. If this was 1984, really fantastic. We're past that, Joe. We're past that. So while this is a victory I, and I'm, we're going to go into the specifics of the victory. It is good. Be real clear here. Now don't, don't brunch out on this because <laughs> this is what the Democrats do. Yay. Victory. And then behind the scenes, do more awful shit or open up another pipeline or Oh, we'll just drill in some other poor country so Americans shut up or whatever. Just be just just. But a lot of this has to do with public pressure, and we need to take credit for that. The decision had been expected after President Biden used his first day in office to revoke a key per permit for the pipeline to cross the country's northern border, shutting down construction. Again, something Obama could have done but didn't. I just want to make this Joe Biden's no hero. When he was vice president, him and Obama controlled the white house. The Democrats controlled the Senate and the Congress, and they could have passed sweeping, sweeping banking reform, which they didn't do. We're going to have another housing crisis because they just gave the banks a trillion dollars and didn't jail the bankers like they did in Iceland. They could have had sweeping environmental laws. They could have made it impossible for Trump to pass any bad environmental laws could have made it impossible, but they're not going to do that because the democratic party gets money from the fossil fuel lobby, just like the Republicans do. So just want to be real clear, man. This is again, this is the wall street journal. So they have a vested interest in keeping the capitalism and the, you know, Wall Street, J Wall Street, they really, the Wall Street Journal wants Wall Street to keep going. <laughs> I'll quote that, that movie, the Wall Street Journal, not exactly a bastion of anti-capitalist sentiment. <laughs> but my point is here, Biden is no hero for doing this. This could have happened under the Obama administration, but this is pressure. And now the vote any blue do crowd will go, see, we're pulling Biden to the left. No, you're not. 
to the left of what the right wing fascism of Trump. Now we've got nice cuddly fascism. Like let's be real clear here. Hold on because Joe Biden could have, he could just end wars. The U S military is the number one polluter of the environment. He's not doing that. He's getting more budgets. He increased his ice budget. Like he, <laughs> let's just, it's just, um, groups like 350.org, which has fought the Keystone XL project are also pressuring wall street to curb fossil fuel extraction. And we're a force behind activist investors winning board seats at Exxon Mobil. I want to talk about this because I've said a lot on this show, we need creative ways to do this because electoral politics, while yes, everyone should vote, people thinking that's the only way to invoke change or that's, that's, that's delusional. It should be one of like five to 10 things to do. And I've said before, we need creative solutions. Activists likely to gain third seat on Exxon board. Hedge fund engine number one challenged Exxon strategy amid climate change concerns. Now, is engine number one a bunch of hippies? I doubt it. They're probably just died in the wool capitalists who are like real smart enough to go fossil fuels is it's over. We need, it's going to kill. If we kill the planet, we can't keep making profits. So I don't want to sit here and go, yay. Engine number one is the, you know, <laughs> is the green party of hedge funds. You're still a hedge fund. <laughs> I'd like to do a little more research on engine number one, but let's just be clear here. But this is one, what one tactic to use. Exxon said Wednesday that an updated vote count showed shareholders backed a third nominee of engine number one, an upstart hedge fund that had already won two board seats at Exxon's annual shareholder meeting last week. Engine number one, which owns a tiny fat fraction of Exxon stop had sought four seats on the board and argued the Texas oil giant should commit to carbon neutrality, effectively bringing its emissions to zero, both from the company and its products by 2050. If these oil companies were actually smart and really wanted to have long-term sustainability financially, they should be like, yeah, we're going green. They should be leading the way. Like AT&T, American Telephone and Telegraph, they saw the writing on the wall that the Telegraph wasn't going to still be around. So they went into telephones and then when cell phones started, they really decided we need to get into the mobile phone business. I'm just talking, I'm just talking about from a financial standpoint, if I was the CEO of Exxon mobile, like guys, this business is going to be out of date because all these countries, car manufacturers are saying, we're, all these car, man, we're not making gas cars anymore. We're going to be country after country by 2030, by 2035, no more gas cars. You know, we're going to be carbon neutral. India has had to do that. They're, they have a huge pollution problem. China has in 2015, China just said overnight, I mean, you know, in 2007, eight, nine, somewhere in there. And they, they just, by 2010 on China just changed everything. Pollution's done more trains, not pollution's done, but they just said, we're going to fight it. So I remember in 2015, during Obama's last term, China outspent America on clean energy three to one. It was like a hundred and almost $120 billion. And America was like $40 billion somewhere in that neighborhood. And I've been to China. And I saw windmills and, and high speed rail. And yeah, I saw very bad smog too, because they it's like really bad. I was in Beijing in 2015 and there were some blackout days where you like, don't go outside. So they're doing something about it. And if you're just an investor, you should be like, we should go green. Let's be at, let's be on the forefront of this. Let's be on, let's get on the cutting edge. We're changing everything to green. That's what you should be doing. I mean, just as an investor, if you're just a greedy capitalist that just wants to make money, I wouldn't invest in fossil fuels because they're done. All these cars now are all these electric cars are coming out. Whoever can solve the riddle of climate collapse 
is going to be a very wealthy person. If you're the company that can say, here's what we, we fixed it. We can pull all the videos I've talked about, the algae that pulls uh, harmful emissions out of the air, the um, Alvaria, that mineral to put on beaches that pulls it out. I mean, I've done video after video on all these little projects that it's working. The science is it's working. It just needs mass adoption. ExxonMobil could say, we're done. We're shutting down oil production and we're going into this. And people would laud them as heroes. If the preliminary voting results hold, it will control a quarter of Exxon's 12 person board. So, you know how we talk about politics is local. We want to, we want a president to come in and okay. Biden wouldn't give the permit to do the pipeline. This is just one pipeline. He's going to find another way to make money from the oil guys one way or another. This, the Democrats aren't our heroes, but this is when I talk about on a local grassroots level, this is how we can affect change. If you're like a wall street person and you actually like, man, this ain't right. The world is Exxon Mobil and these companies are destroying the planet. I'm going to use our hedge fund for good. Like Michael Saylor. I don't know the man personally. Uh, he seems like Bitcoin. He woke up to the fact and he probably was kind of a wall street weasel who made a bunch of money, you know, whatever not paying taxes and all that stuff. And he kind of woke up to how Bitcoin can help pull people out of poverty. I don't know. Um, that's just what I'm surmising from his interviews. Uh, I'm sure he did some shady stuff to become a, a big hedge fund guy. And now he's like, this ain't right. So people are kind of growing conscious because they probably don't want to be strung up after what they saw last summer. Cause last summer's, you know, if people, if the financial markets collapse and people are really hungry and starving and kicked out of their homes and on the street, Last summer's protests are going to look like a goddamn Disney parade. So some of these wealthy people are waking up, but this is what I'm talking about. Get on your city council, get activists on your school board, get activists on infiltrate. That's what use the, use the playbook of the intelligence community. They infiltrate all these activist movements. Let's infiltrate their shit. You know? Let's infiltrate there. Let's get, I love, let's get activists on that board of Exxon Mobil. Let's get activists on the board of Raytheon, on Boeing, on Shell, on Smith and Wesson and the gun manufacturers. Let's get activists on those boards and just steer it in our direction. That's what they do. That's what they've done. So rather, I mean, rallies in the streets are great. They're great. And putting public pressure is great, but affecting their bottom line is the only thing they care about. Boycotts, strikes, that affects, that wakes them up. Work stoppages and people taking over. We need to take over city councils. We need to take over, um, you know, boards, board of directors. Instead of just letting a bunch of greedy assholes that all live in the Hamptons or whatever, we need to take them over. Let's get some socialists on these boards. Another reason to invest in Bitcoin, because if you become independently wealthy from Bitcoin, then you have some power and you can affect these companies in real ways. So I'm glad this pipeline got shut down. I will not be jumping in the streets for Joe Biden because they're going to wait and see what he's going to do. I'm sure he's going to pass more laws that are actually bad for the environment because they'll do like one good one that'll get a lot of press and then three or four bad ones that the MSNBC won't cover. Fox News is, you know, their 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 take on this is going to be, ah, pipelines are murdering jobs. Getting rid of the pipelines is hurting American jobs. It's like we could all Americans could all go to work doing green energy. We could everyone we could end poverty. We could end homelessness and save the planet doing it. The whole country could get involved doing this. It would be an amazing thing that would unify the whole country. But the fossil fuel companies buy a lot of ad time on Fox and MSNBC and CNN. So vote with your dollars, take public transportation, ride your bike, get an electric car. I have an electric car. They're not the final. I know that they're not perfect and you, there's a lot of materials that go into them, but not giving the fossil fuel companies your money. They don't have money for the wars. They don't have money for the sanctions on countries like Iran and Venezuela that won't give up their oil. That oil needs to stay in the ground. 
We need to find new solutions. El Salvador just adopted Bitcoin as its currency. That's going to make a change. So, because when we talk oil, we're talking geopolitics, we're talking the petrodollar, we're talking all these wars, they're all connected. So that's why getting involved in, there's many ways. It's like the Wall Street bets thing with GameStop showed us what a creative way of being of revolution and activism, that Wall Street bets thing. Nobody got arrested, nobody got hurt. Getting activists on the Exxon Mobil's board, no tear gas, no rubber bullets, no smashing anything, nobody getting arrested. Just we're changing this. There's nothing you can do. There's more of us than there are of them. We need to get involved on every little level and then we can affect real change. So this is a victory. Keep our eyes on the Democrats because I don't trust them. I still am not voting for Democrats. You still can't reform that party from within. If you think so, you're a sucker. <laughs> Thanks for watching the show. Follow the money, connect the dots, get the truth. That's how you make Gotham great again. Shave your knuckles for justice. Thanks for watching everybody. Please hit the like button, the subscribe button. Go to patreon.com slash Graham Elwood and rockfin.com slash Graham Elwood where you can support the show. Also, I have a Bitcoin wallet, a Bitcoin cash wallet, and an Ethereum wallet in the show notes. We're taking cryptocurrency. I have a Coinbase affiliation link. We're going to be getting on some other exchanges. So that's how you support the show. Make sure you hit the subscribe button. YouTube is unsubscribing us at an alarming rate. I have a PayPal button at GrahamElwood.com. I even have a Venmo at Graham-Elwood. There's a lot of ways to support our show. We are getting crushed by YouTube. They're We've dipped under 73,000 subscribers because of YouTube. Thanks for supporting what we do.